Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So this is um, ribbed and pillar moulded glass part three, decanters, yeah. So I'm gonna do a part four um, I'm gonna do jugs and I'm wondering, should I do a part five and cover other things like, like this? Does this count, you know? So yeah, your thoughts on that? I could probably, I've not even looked. And um, yeah, I just, I was just looking on the shelves of stuff and just then and I found another glass here. And these are both sort of like 18th century ones. So yeah, this molding thing has been going on for a long time. But anyway, we're gonna do decanters today. The um, Classic is this shape. Yeah, the bell shaped ones, but I have a couple of others to show you as well. And um, so I think we'll we'll just get on because I'm not trying to keep these videos not too long. Then the jugs is gonna be longer because I have a few more. I don't have that many decanters, so let's get on and have a look at some glass. Thinking again, actually, let's look at the books first, or the book. So um, let's do that first. It's decanters. So the book we're looking at is The Decanter, Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. Yep, and this is the first page. What he says is that these are from 1845 onwards, which means he thinks they came in when the excise tax on glass ended. So. This one is from a catalogue from Holyrood um, and it's dated 1865. But I do know lots of people making these. You see them lots and there's lots of little variations. Um, I have something a bit like this, but not quite the same to show you. But all the features are the same. Mine's a bit better quality because it's got a bit of cutting on it. I have something like this to show you. And I also have one of these. Yeah, and this is from 1930, and it is kind of imitating the early, earlier stuff. It's made by Hill Ooston, who were kind of making. They made a lot of Georgian -y repro and Regency repro stuff, but this seems to be a bit of a side because it's a bit later in style. But anyway, we've got more stuff to look in this book, so let's travel on a couple of pages. So we've gone on a few more pages and um, yeah, so he's saying this is another picture. This one's from, he's saying this one's from 1880. Um, yeah, and he describes this as, what does it say? Syrup in colors with metal cap. Yeah, so, and this is from Scotland as well. So, forward rank in Hollywood, Glasgow. And it's for hotel and bar decanters measures just like one we were looking at yesterday anyway on the next page there are some american ones which are kind of similar but different but there we go look at this with what's known as a bar lip which means it was never intended to have a glass stopper fitted it would have a cork of some kind and there's this one which is actually like that one that says syrup and colors with a metal top I'm presuming that's what he meant by metal cap. So, but this one's got a handle, but it's the same kind of ribbed glass. Yeah. So that's what's in this book. So this is the first rib decanter I'm showing you. I've already shown you one, this one before. It's a bottle shaped decanter mid century, but look at this ribbing. And what's nice is you can see where it goes underneath and where they've actually then cut the pontle in and that's where it stops it goes right up to the very top right underneath the lid lip there yeah this is one that was built never to have a glass stopper and um, yeah it's a really nice piece I've got a pair of these um, and they're mid-century um, and it is unusual you do occasionally see them and there was one not exactly the same as this but of the same standard as this one or philosophy or whatever but 
Yep. And the ribs on this are spaced, quite small but spaced. So this is the next one I'm showing you. This is close to the standard one. This one's a little bit bigger than usual. See, with the put the uh, right next to it. There we go. It's about thirty and a half inches tall. And um, yeah, sorry, I'm losing it now. And um, yeah, and what's unusual is that you see the stopper. It's got the notches cut there and the ribs there and there. The top is cut up, polished out as well. Where it ever usually just be blown into a mold and that would be pulled off there and. You wouldn't spot that. And then, yeah, and then it's got notches cut in the ribs, can you see? And then the shoulders are cut as well. And the optic is really thick. This is a real, for this kind of decanter, this is a real beast, um, which is why I have it. it you know, um, you know me, I'm always looking for the unusual. So you, you see a lot of decanters that look like this one. This one stands away from the crowd a little bit of them. So that's why it's mine. So, but this form is the one that you're gonna see a lot of. And if you go back through my visits where I'm out um, visiting Antique Center, or if you watch them going forward, you're gonna see a lot of these because they're just, they're just out there everywhere made from bars and inns as it said in the in the book um, so that's and I think probably quite a lot of manufacturers I think some people call them Newcastle decanters as well but um, yeah but they're not just from Newcastle I don't think well we know they're at least from um, Scotland as well so anyway let's move on and have a look at something else so this one is another variation um, I'll show you what I mean. So this one's not as good quality. I mean, the stopper's got, it's all clouded out. And there's nothing you can do about that. That's, that's a bubble of air. And so it was like that when it was made. Yeah, that is a manufacturing fault, but it's good enough for a bar or an inn. And the top is not, there's no pontal there. It's just the mold. Can you see? And yeah, some of them, the peg is not as well made as this. This, this one, the peg is decently made. And um, and then the ribbing is a bit strange because it's like three smaller ribs and then a bit of a space and then three and a bit of a space. And you can see it goes underneath like that. Yeah, so this is another one caught my eye because it's a little bit different from the standard little triple ring normally this is like an optic piece in the center but um, not in this case I do have another decanter I can't find it though which is a little half pint one which is really odd proportions because it's got like a little runty body and a long neck but I couldn't find it I've looked everywhere in the shed um, so yeah, so that's this one. And I said, you're gonna see these little tiny variations. Some of them like this more pronounced, but some of them are really small variations on the standard. You do remember that this video is about pillar and rib molding. And this one is pillar. So look at this. This is one of the heaviest decanters. Oh God, I forgot already I own. It is a monster. It weighs an absolute ton. Uh, let me put it to the side a little bit. And if I pull out another one here, I remember I did a comparison at the beginning on pillar and pillar cutting and pillar molding. So this is a pillar cut one. You see, it has a kind of similarish look, but let me show you the difference because this one, if you look here. Can you see what I mean about, if you go back to part one, you can see it's got this, doo -doo, like a flower kind of, effect. well, the other one will have a petal kind of effect. And if I pull this one out, you can see it comes into a tight edge here. 
if I can get it to focus. Yeah, can you see? So this is a groove that's cut and then it's smoothed out. So this is pillar cutting and this is pillar molding. And I'm sure you could try and get the pillar molding to be more like this, but it's actually not as easy. Um, and generally you can tell the difference just by the fact that it just has an inward curve and an outward curve, whereas this just has outward curves that join together. So maybe let me get the right ones back on the right stoppers. Yeah, and this one is this is fits into the blood and decanter category. Probably my other big pillar cut one does as well because they're so heavy, which really puts them in that 1845-1865 period when the tax on glass by weight came off and everybody went a bit crazy and just made really heavy decanters. Um, and that is the case with that one. It weighs a... I'm not even weighed it, but... Um, yeah, it weighs a ton. So I had a quick pop into the kitchen, pulled out the um, good old kitchen scales, and it's um, five point. Uh, it's five pounds three ounces, or one in kilos. That's uh, two point three five eight kilos. So yeah, there is a lot of glass in that. Um, if I show, you, Paul, let me dig something out that um, would have had the glass tax on. And um, you'll see the, see what I mean. So pull out a decanter from 1810, weighing it on the scale. It's not in great condition. And yeah, that's 7.88 or in pounds. Yeah, two pounds seven ounces, as opposed to so it's literally half the weight of this and it probably looking at it I reckon this probably just about holds a bottle and that holds a litre so it's even a bigger bottle I nearly forgot this decanter here so this is the one that's by Ooston Hill um, from Stourbridge from the 1930s and it's kind of a bit of a throwback because um, it's all this tall, slim shape, but it's ribbed like the other ones were. Let me take the stopper off, show you the other one. There you go. And you can see it is a 1930s. Um, you can look at the state of the stopper peg. It's as clean, clean and nice and highly processed kind of thing. And then you've got the base. You can see the the ribs on it, but they've got notches cut in them, like the one that we were looking at earlier. Yeah, same kind of notches, and it's got panel cut neck. Yeah, now I've seen these in other colours. I've seen them in uranium green, and um, I think I might have seen it in yellow. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, so they, they do come in other colours. Whether there's even more than those ones. It's dark, not quite bottle green, but darkish green. But anyway, yeah, it is a nice thing. Um, looks very smart. And, and it's kind of, it foxed me when I, I bought it because you know me, I've mentioned it before, something a little bit unusual, and, and it stood out for me as being something a bit unusual. And I, it's one of those ones where I said, I'm going to buy this and figure it out later, and I did actually manage to figure out what it was afterwards. So, there you go. Austin Hill, so 1930s, which is the newest one of this type that I've got. So there we have the decanters, apart from one which I can't find. But, um, yeah, um, there is a reason why I use um, Andy McConnell's book so much is because what makes them so good is that 
in both of this book and the other one that I used, the 20th century, Miller's 20th century one, there's glass in there. You can go to any an antique centre and you will find something that's in that book. So if you sit there flicking through that book and trying to learn it, you can guarantee you can go to any antique centre in the UK and you will find some of that glass, which is why I really like them. Yeah, because it's, it's a book for you and me, not just for people with really deep pockets. Um, and what else do I want to say? Yeah, and I am repeating myself about stuff to do with the glass excise tax and everything, because I'm going to make you learn that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you like that. There will be another one. There will be more jugs, and some of them are really nice, and some of them are really old. And, um, yeah, if you think I should do glasses as well, I don't know what I've got. I'll have to dig around. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. And um, so book reference will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Even if you only just like, it means that a higher percentage of the people that are watching are liking what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good evening. Good night.